Oh, friends, here we go. Are you ready? Because we are learning all of the rules. They're called properties of why and how we do what we do in algebra. Super exciting for me. You, it will be, there's lots of words to learn. Okay, so here we go. Let's just jump right in to this. Okay, first one we're going to talk about is the commutative property. And you are going, you are expected to know the names of these and what they look like. So commutative property. Just kidding, it's a Y. Okay, commutative property. Now this is the rule that says as long as we have all addition or all multiplication, we can change the order around and it doesn't change the value. So the book definition states that the order in which numbers are added or multiplied does not change the sum or product. You didn't think you'd want to write that down. So um, what I like to say is order doesn't matter for addition or multiplication. Okay, so what that looks like, I'm just gonna put it in variable form right now so you can see what that looks like. So we could have A plus B, and it would be the same thing as B plus A. So two plus three is the same thing as three plus two, okay? Same idea with a multiplication. A times B is the same thing as B times A. So 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. They're both 6, right? But if you think about it, subtraction and division, that doesn't work out, right? It's just with addition and multiplication. So that's the commutative property. What I like to say is the numbers can go on a commute, they commute or move, they go somewhere. So that's how I like to remember the commutative property, okay? Next one is the associative property. Gah, wise, okay? The associative property, I like to think of associative, kind of sounds like associate, and it's like, who do you associate with? So with the associative property, the book says, this property states that the way in which numbers are grouped when they are added or multiplied does not change the sum or product. So again, we're dealing with just addition and multiplication, but this time you can move the parentheses uh, that that's how I remember it, moving parentheses. Okay, so what that looks like in variable form is like if we have a plus b plus c, that could be the same thing as we can actually move the parentheses because parentheses tell us what to do first, right? So in this one, we would add the b and the c first, and then we would add the a. But the associative property says we could also add the a and the b first, and then add c, and it would come out to be the same thing. And the same thing works with multiplication as well. You can move the parentheses, so change which one you do first, and it doesn't change the value, okay? Um, do you want me to write that? I can write multiplication. A times B times C is the same thing as A times B times C, okay? Um, so those are kind of two really big ones. This is why when we were learning our positive and negative numbers, I wanted you to rewrite all subtracting as adding the additive inverse because as long as we have stuff written as addition, we can do these things. And it's awesome. Okay, now there's some other um, properties and identities that we will talk about. There's three more and then... Uh, one other word I want to define. Okay, so another property we have is called the additive identity. Okay, so 
just looking at the words additive identity. So we're adding and the identity, I like to think of this as what can you add to any number and that number keeps its identity. Here's a hint, zeros involved. So the rule for the additive identity says, well, when zero is added to any number, the sum is the number. You know, that's how the book says that. I like to say adding zero doesn't change the value. Okay, and this idea we're gonna use a lot when we're solving equations, okay? Not by name specifically, but this is really kind of the goal, is to get to a place where we can use the additive identity. Now, if you've noticed, what we do with addition, we also do with multiplication, and that is the same here too. There's a multiplicative, multiplicative, that's one of my favorite words to say, multiplicative. It just trips off the tongue, multiplicative. So multiplicative identity, The multiplicative identity is the same idea. What, when we multiply, what number can we multiply to a number and it keeps its identity? So that is the number one, right? So multiply, multiplying by one doesn't change the value. Okay, the book says it, when any number is multiplied by one, the product is the number. You know, I'll put the book's chart up too on the Canvas page, but I like how I say things. It's not quite as highfalutin. Okay, and now we're going to use that multiplicative word again, because I like it, I like it a lot, multiplicative. So the last property, that's actually an identity, is the multiplicative property of zero, okay? And what is our multiplying rule of zero? You guys know that if you, any number, multiplied, by zero is zero. Yay! When any number is multiplied by zero, the product is zero. So I just don't use fancy words like product. It's fine. Okay? So that's always a fun one, right? Good times. Okay, the last thing I want to define before we do some problems is an idea, this idea of a counter... Example, okay, a counter example means we're gonna do an example. You wanna show an example that shows um, a theory or conjecture is wrong. So it's an example of why something doesn't work. Okay. And I'll show you in just a little bit how that works. Um, the bulk of today's assignment is just identifying properties, but a couple of them are showing counterexamples. And then um, we're going to do a little bit of simplifying. And again, I think the book thinks you remember how to do that from Oh, no, I guess there's a couple of examples of simplifying. We're going to have to talk about terms for a minute. But let's practice our properties first. Okay? So you'll see something like this. Two times. I'm going to put the dots in here for now just to make sure things are super, super clear with multiplying and that sort of thing. So two times five times n equals 
2 times 5 times n. Okay, so what changed from this side of the equation to this side of the equation? Did the numbers move or did the parentheses move? Okay, the parentheses moved, right? That's what we call the associative property. So you can write associative. Done. Math for today. Ta-da. Okay, so that's what the associative property looks like. Next problem, 3x plus 0 equals 3x. Okay, so which one of the rules that we wrote down up here deals with adding a 0? Adding a 0. That's our additive identity. Okay, that says that if you add 0, that number doesn't change. So this is the additive identity. Next problem. See how quickly this goes? There's more to do. Alrighty, um, number three, 42 plus x plus y equals 42 plus y plus x. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So zero's not involved or multiplying by one, so it's not the last three. Um, so on this one, what happened? Did parentheses move or did the order of, did the numbers themselves or variables in this case move? The variables moved, right? It was x plus y and now it's y plus x. So we've changed the order, so that's the commutative property. Okay, and... Next one, 27 times 1 is 27. <laughs> what are you thinking? This time we are multiplying by 1. So a number times 1 is just that number, and this is our multiplicative identity. You don't have to write the whole thing out. You can just do that if you'd like. Okay, the one that we haven't used yet, just for funsies, let's, so you can see an example, would be 33 times 0 is 0. Okay, and that's what our multiplicative property of 0 looks like. Okay. Alrighty, so that's practicing our properties. Now... Let's practice this idea of a counterexample, okay? So, if they gave us a conjecture, a statement, so, so the problem will say something like, state whether the following conjecture is true or false. If false, provide a counterexample, okay? So, the statement is division of whole numbers is commutative. Okay, so that's the statement. Is it true or false? Division is commutative. Is it an A or an I? It is an A, woohoo, spelling things right. Okay, so what do you guys think? Looking at our rules, looking at all the rules, anywhere up here, did we say that we can do these things with division? No. So, I say that division is not commutative, so I'm going to call this one false. Then, if you call something false, you need to provide a counterexample. Okay, so what that's going to look like is we could say that 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, and if it's commutative, we could switch the order and 4 divided by 12. Is 4 divided by 12 3? No, it's not. It's, I'm actually going to write it this way. It's 0 0.3 repeating. Okay? These are not equal. And that shows or demonstrates that you cannot change the order of division and have it be the same. 
It is not. So that's what a counter example looks like. Okay. Now the last little bit, there's a weird section on like doing mental math and using the commutative property to um, help you with mental math. And this is what it looks like. I don't know that I agree with it 100%, but I mean, like I do. It's just something I think I do naturally rather than even thinking about it. The idea is, can you add these with your brain without having to write anything down? And we can use the commutative property to make it easier. So instead of doing 38 plus 14 plus 22 plus 16, we could put 14 and 16 together because 4 and 6 adds up to 10. So that makes a total of 30 real fast. Okay, and then if we put these two together, because the 8 and the 2 add up to 10, that makes that really easy. And we carry 1, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus the carried 1 is 6. So we got 60 here, and we got 30 here. And see how they put those together to get to the 90. So it's just saying if it's all addition or all multiplication, you can change the order around to make the adding easier. All right, now the stuff we really want to get to is this idea of simplifying. Okay, we're going to have a whole section on this next question mark. Nope, not next. I think we'll just practice it while we go. So to simplify means we want to get down to one type of each term. So let's talk about terms for a minute, okay? A term is, um, God, I don't even know how I want to say this. Do, 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 because we didn't. All right, so a term, a term is anything that is separated by addition or subtraction. There, any number or expression separated by addition or subtraction, okay? So what simplifying means is we want to do the math. So DTM, so there's only one type or one of each term. Only one of each term. All right, so I know those are super confusing words, but that's the idea behind it. This is what it looks like, okay? So it means that you can add constants. Remember, constants are plain numbers that don't have a variable, or you can add or multiply the variable as long as it matches exactly, okay? So, here's our first practice problem. We've got in parentheses seven plus G plus five. Okay, now, because seven and G are two different types of terms, seven is a constant, and g is a variable, we cannot add those together unless we knew what g was, which we don't. So we can't do anything about that. But we've got this plus 5. 5 and 7 are the same type of term. They are both constants, so we could actually put them together. So using the commutative and associative properties, um, we can change the order on this one to put the numbers that are like terms together. So um, I'm just going to switch the G and the 5. That'll be the commutative property. And it says justify your reasoning. And so I'm going to do 7 plus 5 in the parentheses plus G, and the reason I can do that is the commutative property. Okay, just switched the 5 and the G. Now I can add these two together. 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 plus G. This is as simplified as it gets, and we're going to be practicing this a ton coming up. 
You cannot put the 12 and the G together because they're different types of terms. Whew, that's a lot. All right, let's try a different one. So this one we're gonna have 2N times six and times three N. So again, um, notice how these two terms have matching variables. They both just have an N to the first power. So we can put those together. I'm going to switch out, again, commutative property. I'm going to switch the 2n and the 3n. Now, multiplication is a little bit different because really with multiplication, you can just kind of smack everybody together. But let's practice our commutative 2n times 3n and then times 6. So again, we can do that because of the commutative property. Okay, now I can multiply these two together, but you multiply the number to the number and the variable to the variable. So two times three is six. N times N is N squared. Okay, and then we're gonna multiply that by another six. And because it's um, multiplication, we can still multiply the six and the six together. Six times six is 36. The n squared hasn't changed, okay? So there's just a few problems like that to practice. Remember with the multiplication, you kinda just can multiply everybody together. With the addition, we can only add together terms that match. All right, I think that should cover things for this assignment. Have fun.